today we're going to be diving a little deeper into one of the most highly anticipated full self-driving beta releases ever. What the heck happened to version 11, and can it ever live up to the hype? There is a some fundamental like leap that really deserves the 11. I mean, that's a pretty cool number. Yeah, you know? Le 11 would be a single stack for all, you know, one stack oh, to rule them stack. all. There's just some really fundamental neural net architecture changes that will allow for much more capability, but, but at first they're gonna have issues. A lot of people seem to be under the impression that 11 is finally going to be the update that comes in and saves us from many of FSD Beta's current issues, and that it's going to be dramatically different compared to what we currently have. And maybe that's the reason it's taking so long, because it's so different than what we're used to. But I'd like to propose a different theory. First, you have to realize that the hype around version 11 has been around longer than just the last few months. Much longer. The Lex clip I played was actually recorded in December of 2021, and even at that time, Elon was saying he hoped to get it out by the end of the year. But what many don't realize is that a lot of the functionality that was promised at those times is actually already here and was added to FSD beta in the dot updates of version 10. So what does that even mean, and what can we expect from this highly anticipated release? Well, lucky for us, we kinda already have some answers. Tesla Bull has been posting videos of version 11 on his Twitter, and I must warn you, some of these clips don't exactly inspire confidence. And Tesla Bull, if you got access to version 11 by being an employee, I'd recommend going into hiding, because history shows Tesla doesn't exactly take internal leaks very well. All right, I'm having way too much fun with this video. All jokes aside, I think we can actually learn quite a bit from the clips he's been posting, and they can serve as a bit of a reality check for us to temper our expectations a bit. For example, one of the things I was still holding out hope for was that version 11 would be more confident in its decision making. A lot of times on current versions, the beta bails on maneuvers halfway through doing them, which is uncomfortable and makes the system seem a lot less capable than I think it actually is. You've probably heard me talking about this a lot before in my previous videos, and although we did get a new planner visualization, it still doesn't appear very confident, and seems like it's still being extremely indecisive in what I would consider pretty basic planning, which is a bummer. Instead, it appears, at least from first glance, that most of the work has been going into making the highway version perform well, which is no small task because the current version of Navigate on Autopilot is actually one of the best performing and most relaxing parts of using Autopilot. I imagine a lot of the delays we're seeing is partly because Tesla does not want to sacrifice comfort on the highway for something that is technically capable of doing more, but ends up not performing as well and being less comfortable. But I do think there are a few other factors at play here. In October of last year, Tesla removed ultrasonic sensors on the 3 and Y and more lately the S and X, which is being replaced with Tesla Vision, meaning that we'll only use its onboard cameras to figure out distances to nearby objects. During this transition period, there's a loss of functionality, including all parking assistance and summon features, meaning some owners have owned their vehicles for over five months now and still don't have any form of park assist, which I imagine is extremely frustrating. Does this mean that Tesla hasn't yet been able to match the performance of ultrasonics with vision only? While there is a possibility that that is the case, I think there's something else going on that is more than likely the sole reason version 11 and the functionality that comes with it hasn't yet been released. The full self-driving recall. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration recently had Tesla quote unquote recall every single vehicle that has the full self-driving beta installed, all 362,000 of them, and also pause the rollout of current software to new owners. The reason for this, they claim, is that the beta goes through intersections on what they call stale yellow lights. It doesn't come to a full and complete stop at stop signs when there's no other traffic around, doesn't control for speed limits as fast as it should, and that it can use lanes incorrectly, like going straight in a turn-only lane. Now, there's a couple different ways to think about this, but I actually think that overall, this is a good thing for the path of real autonomy because it means that the federal agency that regulates this kind of technology used and reviewed the full self-driving beta, and instead of forcing Tesla to remove it from their vehicles, they gave some guidance on what they think it should be doing better, which I think is completely fair. And there are a couple points on that recall that I'm glad are gonna be addressed. 
The first is the beta's lane selection and overall decision making about what lane to be in at any given time. Although it's gotten better with more recent software updates, it can still do some pretty wonky things that confuses human traffic around it, and I really hope that version 11, whenever it comes out, addresses this in a major way. The second thing is the speed limit control. Currently, the beta doesn't control for speed limit signs until it goes by them, which can be a big problem on a road like this where the speed limit cuts in half from 50 miles an hour to 25. Everything past this speed limit sign is prime time ticket zone. I see cops camp out here all the time waiting for someone to do exactly what we just did. And even more concerning, it takes a super long time for the car to actually slow down, which is why I think this was part of the recall in the first place. I'm gonna let this clip continue to play until it reaches 25, just so you can get a sense. Hopefully, the fix for this makes the beta react to the signs before it goes past them and makes it slow down a little bit quicker. That doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with the rest of the points on the recall though, especially the yellow light and stop sign points, because in my opinion, slamming on the brakes for yellow lights and coming to a full complete stop when nobody else is at the intersection just makes it more likely for the human driver behind me to rear end me. And that's always one of my main concerns using the beta. So to answer the question of what the heck happened to version 11, the answer is, well, a lot of things. Tesla's under a massive amount of pressure to deliver something great, and the more delayed it gets, the higher the expectations are. I don't think there's any way to deliver what the public is expecting version 11 to be at this point, but I also think that that's probably okay. Because one unified stack for all driving circumstances is a major accomplishment in and by itself, and should enable a ton more functionality in the future, even if it doesn't solve all of our problems with the first version. I think that once it finally does release, we should see the updates coming in much quicker, at least compared to the frequency we've been getting them recently. I also find Tesla's decision to remove the ultrasonics from the 3 and Y five months ago now is a bit of a head scratcher, but do believe they did so because they had certain parts of the software working well and were confident in it, but perhaps there's other parts that need more time to fully bake. And even if we were right on the verge of version 11 being released in the last few months, I think that the NHTSA recall had to have delayed it even further. I'm sure they're working hard to get all the recall issues addressed, but a lot of times in software, when you patch something, two other things break, and we all know that version 11 will be two steps forward in some areas, but how many steps back in other areas is still a very valid question. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what you think. Always interested in hearing all your opinions and if I missed anything. And until next time, everyone. Bye.